directly after the war, I was I was uh, 15 year old, and uh, the uh, the war there were people who were looking for apprentices in Sunderland uh, for lamp working. And that was that was called Northern Glass and Instruments. It had a, it had a trade name which was Norgill Northern Glass and Instruments. And they, they, the, the people who, who ran Norgill, the owners, they were all people who'd been trained at James A. Joblings in the 1930s. At, at that time, of, uh, everybody was leading, all the young, young men were leading up to what we were called national service in those days. You had to, compulsorily, you had to do two years in the Army, the Navy or the Air Force. Uh, and that was at the age of 18 or 21 if you were serving a, an apprenticeship, you see. But when I came out, uh, there was people waiting for me coming out. They wanted, they wanted a glass blower. And that was a company called uh, Scientific Equipment Company. And the, the, two, the two chaps who, were, who owned Scientific Equipment Company, one of them was the managing director of the first place I ever worked at, which was Northern Glass Instruments. They were just lo they were laboratory suppliers, everything for the laboratory chemicals, you name it, they, they supplied it, and glassware as well, you see, that was where I, where I came into it, you know. Um, we were also quite, quite big in components for the, the industry, which was um, um, glass, glass parts that other manufacturers could readily buy from us and utilise on their products, you know, which was, Pyrex used a lot of our stuff. Quick fitting quartz used a lot of our stuff. A lot of the big specialist manufacturers, Springham's stopcocks, John Young's stopcocks, they were all they were all using our parts uh, to um, you know to, to, to keep their keep their industries going. And then over a period of time, it gradually changed. It was while I was at Scientific Equipment Company that someone came to me from um, Adrian Crafts, and the the, the chap who came to me, he was, uh, he was Spanish and he ran Hadrian Crafts and they were up in, up in Hexham, their factory, um, and they made, they made ships, but they made the, the, the wooden decorative ships with the parchment sails that you could stand on your, you know, as a, as a decorative, decorative art article. And he was interested in glass ships and bottles and we knew they were already there on the market in small quantities because I had seen them about two years pre prior to that in, uh, in the Southampton area in uh, Limington. Ah, that. that was where I first saw mm -hmm. glass ships in bottles in, uh, in, in Limington. Mm -hmm. From what I can remember they were all like 100 millimetre bottles or, or one litre one litre flasks or two litre flasks, whatever that won't be, you know, round about there that they were putting. And they were quite elaborate, you know, they were they weren't they weren't made for the mass market. They were quite expensive as well. One like that in nineteen eighty would cost you about hundred and twenty pounds, you know. I mean uh, that was that was a lot of money in in, uh, in nineteen eighty, you know, you look you're looking at uh, what we're looking at nearly forty years ago, you know, it was was a lot of money, you know, and uh, but they were, they were very expensive then. But they were all quite elaborate, the very the early ones. But really, really, uh, real detail, you know, very good detail on them all. And lots of sales, obviously, yeah. They try to, they try to make them with, a, put as many sales on as the original had, you know. They, uh, they, they didn't sort of, uh, they didn't spare any, as you can see on that one there. You've got a multitude of sales on there, even, even the three sales at the front. All of those now. Now later on, they, you, they were lucky to get one sale on there, you know, because it was done for a quick and speed. And, yeah. and they, at that time, Pyrex was beginning to um, receive. They, they were becoming less and less uh, profitable. And uh, over time, a lot of the glass workers were offered work down in the Midlands at the Quickfit Staffordshire plant, which was an, an offshoot of Pyrex. Uh, and a lot of them went to work down there and eventually they closed the Pyrex lab apparatus department down altogether. Well, it, automatically the ones who didn't want to go and live in the Midlands stayed here and it just coincided with the 
the, the shipping bottle boom. So what did they do? They all started making shipping bottles in little workshops all over the town. There was a, it must have been five or six little, little workshops around Sunderland making nothing else but shipping bottles.